What's up guys, Riff here and I am back once again with Mort Guffman. Yes, Mort, it is good to see you. Good to have you here. All right. Yeah. I've been getting more into the Nintendo 64 lately, and I started watching a lot of Nintendo 64 hidden gems videos. Yeah. Great videos. Mm -hmm. But most of the videos I found were made quite a few years ago, and these games that were hidden gems like Mischief Makers and others, yep. they're not really hidden gems anymore. No, it's the Bucky O'Hare effect. Yeah. All these NES games that we were hidden gems before, but everyone's done YouTube videos on them to death. Which is great. Which is great. But now they're super expensive and no one can afford them, so That's... let's do the same thing for N64 games. Yay! Yay! Let's try to make it. It won't happen because nobody watches us. They watch me. It's because of you. They like me. No. Here we go! The Nintendo 64. Definitely not known for its fighting games, but a game came out of nowhere. Smash Brothers, well, it didn't come out of nowhere, but it brought us something new. And I feel like the reason this game was partly put into the world is because the excitement for Smash Bros and this type of platform fighter, we got Tom and Jerry, Fists of Fury. More. what's your initial thoughts about this game? Tom and Jerry's a really fun game. It's sort of like Power Stone for kids. Uh, but we're all kids at heart anyway, we so it works. Heart. No, but it's a really easy pick up and play multiplayer game with two people. Uh, unfortunately, it's not a four player game, but it's still a lot of fun to play on the Nintendo 64. And you gotta think at this time, video games that were out, especially fighting games, were living in this sort of two dimensional plane. And yeah. that's where they were being played. Street Fighter II, King of Fighters, all of these games were that way. And now we enter this era with the PlayStation 1 and the Nintendo 64 where 3D space is starting to be developed, created, and experimented with as games. Tom and Jerry is a 3D fighter that literally uses all of the 3D space. Not a lot of combos, things like that like you'd see in a 2D game, but lots of throwing objects, uh, throwing things at your friends because you're mad that they threw something at you, that kind of a thing. Yeah, it's definitely very minimal for this type of fighter. I would say it's one step up from the Powerpuff Girls game on the Nintendo 64, but like Mort said, it's really cool that you can interact with the environment. There are certain parts parts of the background that will break when you hit it, and you get to choose between. I think you can unlock up to seven different characters, correct me if I'm wrong, but you get to start with Tom and Jerry, the one everyone wants anyway. So Tom and Jerry. You can actually unlock 17,000 different characters in this game. So it's really cool, and a lot of gameplay hours to get there. That's what all those Smash Bros mods feel like now today. I'm like, wow, look, 78 <laughs> characters, awesome. <laughs> I never knew I wanted to play as a purple Power Rangers Sorry. fighting Mario, but okay. Here we go! So one of the things that the Nintendo 64 did wonderfully was four player multiplayer gaming. And one of my favorite genres of games is the puzzle genre. In fact, my favorite game of all time is uh, Puzzle Fighter on originally the PlayStation and uh, later ported to other consoles. Getting to the point, one of the staples of the puzzle game genre is Bust a Move. And this version, Bust a Move 99 is great because it takes the things we love about the N64, the four player matches and the party games, and it matches it with puzzle games. There's a four player mode on this that's not on Bust a Move 2, the arcade edition for the Nintendo 64, which is only a two player game. And the four player mode on this game is great because you can, with the C button, select other players and you can all dump your, uh, you know, the trash onto them and, you know, kind of strategically uh, beat each other that way or whatever. But it ends up being a lot of fun, a lot of yelling and just goofing around. I think that adds so much to what the Nintendo 64 did really well, and that is like cause fun arguments amongst gamers. It gave us some of the best memories doing that, and, you know, obviously yeah. tons of four player games in the Nintendo 64, but being able to team up on one person, like officially, that's, that's the way to do it. I agree. Here we go! Next is a video game that I just recently discovered, and when I discovered it, I fell in love with the game right away, and this game is truly a treasure by treasure in the year 2000, and this is Sin and Punishment, an on-rail shooter, a fun on-rail shooter that is a Japanese exclusive, but as you know, if you have the... Adapter Wonder. This is the cool thing. You'll notice the only difference between Japanese N64 games and American or NTSC N64 games, it's not the hardware, it's literally the game cartridge the way that it's built itself. You'll see that 
This has little uh, indentations here, and this one has indentations on the outside. So when you get one of these little adapter guys, it pops right onto the top of the N64, and you literally just plug your game in onto the top of it. Which is so great, because someone like me, who is a very dedicated gamer, but when it, when it comes down to hardware, yeah. I know nothing. I don't know details, I don't know specs, I don't know DRM, anything like that. I love games for what they are, so being able to just stick in an adapter wonder to play a game like this, is fantastic. And let's also talk about the game itself in terms of being import friendly. All of the voice acting is in English. Straight up. Didn't I tell you? Make me the bait and Radon will come to feast. Radon is jealous. There's lots of easy ways to navigate the menus. We were trying to figure out the menus literally 10 seconds after being online, found them, yeah. no problem. All the voice acting is in English and a lot of fun. Yeah, you definitely want to get used to the controls on this just a little bit before diving into it too hard, which you will, but it is basically a beautifully made Nintendo 64 game, dare I say it. One of the top 10 that I've played, uh, maybe even top five at this point. I got stuck on it pretty hard. I think that's an objective rating. And in fact, I think that that rating is indisputable. Well, thank you, I appreciate that. Yeah, don't argue with it is what I'm trying to say. Here we go! So is it a hidden gem anymore because other people have done videos on this game? Yeah! Body Harvest. This is a game that is a ton of fun to play, but also it's a historical game in the sense that the developers that ended up going on to make great open world games like Grand Theft Auto. Crazy. Yeah, they started it. with this game, which holy smokes, would this be an amazing game on the Switch or modern consoles? That's a new video. That's another video right there. The, yeah, N64 or yeah. Anyway, what I would love, what I love about this game is the world that uh, that was built for this game. It's a 50s uh, sci-fi aesthetic, which and, is so cool. Yeah, it's super fun to play. It's super goofy and silly, but it's also a lot of fun. Technically speaking, some of the uh, characters are made out of like three polygons. It's not a great looking game. There's a lot of fog, as is with most N64 That's games, fine. but um, for what they were doing and for what it would develop into later, um, this is a game really worth checking out and really worth uh, putting on your list, and it's not an expensive game either. And so, um, yes, it's a little antiquated, however, it's the N64, and when you think of 3D open world games, this is really one of the first ones that came out, and especially from someone whose pedigree would be uh, so legendary as what we see with DMA design now. And you, you that was like your thing. When I, when you told me that we're gonna do this video and we talked about it, you're like, listen, I gotta put Body Harvest and I'm like, I found another guy that put it in his hidden gems. He's like, no, but you, you don't understand. I wanna talk about yeah. Body Harvest. So I was like, hey, talk about Body Harvest. <laughs> Next is a game that I would say is my number one pick out of all of them. And this is a Japanese exclusive only for the Nintendo 64, but let me say, on the Dreamcast it also came out in North America and in Europe. But on the Nintendo 64 it is Bangai O. That's, it's not Bangai O. We don't have a box for it. In Bangai O, you take control of a mech called Bangai while flying around 40 different levels in search of fruit. Each level has a boss towards the end of the level that, in my opinion, makes it feel extra nostalgic to me. As you man your ship, you can switch between two characters at any given time during the game, which changes your abilities for your ship, Bangai, and the way it handles. My favorite reason for getting addicted to this game has to be its visual appeal. As a super <laughs> retro guy, seeing the graphics on the Nintendo 64 as a completely 2D looking game, no 2.5, no random add-ins, this keeps it old school. Which back then, in, when N64 games were coming out, I was blown away by Ocarina of Time and what 3D world they yeah. created, or Mario 64, my favorite game, uh, Banjo-Kazooie, but, uh, you know, you know. We also know that this was sort of experiments in this world, or just newly stepping into this 3D world. So 2D games that were already well understood uh, to develop for and to make games for. Really cool to see what the 2D games were that maybe I ignored back then, but today yeah. I'm rediscovering, like Mischief Makers, yeah. like a lot of these other. Treasure games made some fantastic games on the Nintendo 64, plain yeah. and simply. Here we go. So I liked sports, but I really like games like Sega Soccer Slam, like Blitz, Blitz, like Mario Tennis, NBA Jam, NBA Jam, the arcade sports games. Same here. And so those games to me I could play all day. 
This is one that sort of is that. This is NBA Courtside 2 featuring Kobe Bryant. Now, before you throw tomatoes at your computer screen. <laughs> oh, sports boo. suck. Yeah, let's be honest. Uh, playing an N64 game or a PlayStation 1 version of NBA Live or Courtside or any of that, it's antiquated, it's hard to play, yeah. but tucked away in this game is an arcade mode that's a lot of fun, where the characters will run around the screen and different sort of shot points will light up that Love will that. give you bonus Love points, that. that sort of thing. Uh, high flying dunks, the whole kind of thing. It sort of is just a multi-layered fun arcade style experience that's packed within this game, and you can find this game for almost nothing. So yeah. really easy game to find, pick up and play if you like the NFL Blitzes. If you like NBA Jam, check this out. It might be a mode that's worth your time and it's really think, inexpensive to get. But like you said, we love those types of NBA Jams and those random games. This is like the hidden gems of those games that we didn't know existed. I, I would never see that with Kobe Bryant, an official name, knowing that there's some silly modes in there as well. Well, and it's funny too because people will make fun of gamers for playing RPGs and stuff like that, but it's like, aren't like MLB The Show and NHL 99 and FIFA and Madden, isn't that just RPGs for jocks? Yes, RP jocks, they call it. RP jocks. That's a okay. JRPG, jock RPG. Oh, see. That's what it stands I did, for. I didn't realize that that was the thing that people already talked about a lot. So check out uh, Kobe Bryant NBA Courtside 2, but particularly the arcade mode, really worth your time. I'm down. Here we go! All right, more. if you have to pick one of the games out of all of them that someone's gonna play, which one do you wanna steer them towards? Beetle Adventure Ra uh, no. Body Harvest. Body Harvest is probably the game that's really worth checking out and playing. For me, it's gonna be Bangayo, I would say, especially if you're a retro gamer, you gotta try out Bangayo. But, what hidden gems do you guys have? Tell us one that nobody's told us. See which of you guys can find us a hidden gem that is completely under the radar. That's how I kind of felt when I said Bangayo. I feel are, like nobody really says that. Are there any gems on that steaming pile of mediocrity <sighs> that we need to find? There's that border line that's kind of left over <laughs> of all the hidden gems. Like, is there really much yes, left that hasn't it, been said? Yeah, they'll, they'll do it, dude. They'll do it. I know. This there, audience There are knows. some that I really wanted to talk about that either other people had already talked yeah. about a little bit or that are just like, I don't know what people will think about. That. We'll go into it next time. We're gonna do more of these. Let us know what other Hidden Gems video guys, you guys wanna see and anything else you wanna see. We got the world of an oyster behind us. So that's it, guys. Thanks for watching. We appreciate you, Mort. Say goodbye. Goodbye, and I'm looking forward to the next eight parts of this uh, series. Yeah, we're gonna milk it for at least 16 <laughs> more parts. Thanks for having me. See ya.